So why don't we take take a closer look at how this technology would work uh, is CNN's money tech correspondent Lori Siegel. What type of information can be retrieved here? So much. You know, I, I was I was thinking, listen, how if a phone is in the water for a long time, how on earth are you going to be able to get anything off of this? I spoke with a cell phone for instance company uh, called H11 and they gave me a list of all the information uh, you could actually get. We're talking longitude and latitude. If a device had GPS, uh, constantly looking for signal, timeline information, photographs, video, uh, text messages, call history, email, social media, if someone was using Facebook, if someone was trying to make a last call, this is all information. And let's let's go ahead and say it'd be very difficult to actually find these devices, let's say in the middle of the ocean, but this is all information that could be uh, available and could be recovered potentially. We still don't know. I mean, you know, still don't know. one never knows. Sometimes, you know, things pop up and you don't expect them to. What, t what they, they would need some sort of tech tools in order to be able to get this information. What do they need? Absolutely. When you look at, at different phones, Samsung, Apple, uh, Nokia, Kia, they all have different ways of storing information. So there's so many different types of ways you can actually extract information from a really damaged device. Uh, a combination of tools. You know, if you actually were able to find a device had, that was in water for a, a couple months, you know, one big thing is transferring it to a place and not further damaging it. So they have something called a silicone based de uh, dehumidifier that allows you to do that. Then, if a device is, if there's something really wrong with it, if it's really damaged, they have a technique called the chip off technique, which mm -hmm. is exactly what it sounds. You take the chip, you actually clean it up and then you put it in another very similar device and then you can start trying to extract data and you know it's almost like a little bit of a puzzle you're manually putting together different types of data uh, you know if you're lo these these are all different photos of, of phones that have actually you know been really damaged and they were actually able to find lots of data on them so it's you know it, will they even be able to find these kind of devices uh, sure that's you know that's going to be really difficult but if they were there are different types of ways you could get some of this data uh, Rob McCollum is here listening Miles O'Brien also listening as well. Miles, you're a bit of a tech guru yourself. <laughs> uh, what do you make of what Lori is reporting and Ted Rollins? They're both reporting here. Well, I, I'm just I'm just struck by the fact that uh, basically there's more data in those phones potentially at the bottom of the ocean than, exactly. than we have from the airplane itself. And you know, we and we all are, are used to the, the notion of being able to track down our phones electronically. We assume that anybody can find us now. And, and the fact that this 777 has vanished, is to, it, there's, there's such a strange contradiction in all of this that, that needs to be addressed. And when a, the aviation world says we're going to get around to it, we really have to hold these regulatory agencies accountable for this. This should never happen again. It shouldn't have, there should have been, frankly, after 9-11, this should have happened. But certainly after Air France 447 in 2009, somebody should have said we need better capability for tracking the airplanes themselves that would be at least equivalent to the cell phones the passengers are carrying on board.